In July 2011, my grandpa Anthony Morning and I drove to the Four Corners National Monument. We stood on the marker where the boundaries of four states, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, all meet. It is the only place like this in the United States of America. We were on our way to the Ute Mountain Tribal Park in Towak, Colorado. The tribal park surrounds Mesa Verde National Park on three sides and is much larger than Mesa Verde National Park. It belongs to the Northern Ute Tribe who watch over it as the home of the Anasazi or the Ancient Ones. Chimney Rock stands at the entrance to the tribal park. Today it looks much the same as it did when William Henry Jackson photographed it in 1870. The Ute Reservation is on the Colorado Plateau, an area of high deserts and flat mesas. The plateau was first mapped by the Hayden Geological Survey of 1871. William Henry Jackson was an early photographer who was part of the survey team. We stayed in the Ute Mountain Tribal Park campground for three nights. We took a tour each day. Until the Ute Nation opened the park to visitors in 1980, no non-member of the tribe was allowed on the land. Even today, all visitors to the park must have a tribal guide. The park was established after the legal battle with the U.S. government. The government wanted to add the tribal park land to Mesa Verde National Park. One government official complained, the Utes will never do anything with all those ruins. A member of the Ute tribe told him, but we respect the spirits of our ancestors. We never take anything away. We do not change things. Wherever we went, we were encouraged to pick up pottery sherds and examine them. Rick and Scotty explained the different kinds of pottery and how pottery making changed over the hundreds of years that the Anasazi lived in the canyons. In Mesa Verde National Park, everything is shiny clean, just like Disneyland. The problem is the crowds are like Disneyland too. At Mesa Verde, I went into a kiva. It is an underground meeting room. There was a long line to get into the kiva and a long line waiting as I came back out. At Mesa Verde, people are everywhere. All the cliff dwellings are behind ropes, walls, or cables. It is very different from Ute Mountain Tribal Park. Our tribal park tours took us to different parts of the Mancos River Canyons. The first day, our guide Rick Hayes showed us pictographs and petroglyphs. Some were more than a thousand years old. Others were painted in the 20th century by Chief Jack House, the last traditional tribal leader. He painted them on the rock walls of the canyon outside his Hogan. Here, Rick Hayes explains an ancient petroglyph which marks the summer and winter solstices. Not all members of the Ute tribe agreed with Chief Jack House's decision to establish the tribal park. When he died, some of those people who disagreed with the chief's decision to open the tribal lands to visitors burned down his Hogan, where he lived a few feet away from the canyon wall. But they did not touch the pictographs Chief Jack House had painted with red ochre on the canyon walls. These pictographs were painted in the 1940s. The second day we had a different guide, Scotty Jacket. Scotty took several park visitors to four different cliff dwellings. He's only 24 years old, but he knows a lot about his own tribe. After a long drive into the Mancos River Canyon, we began our walking tour with a climb down ladders made from ponderosa pine trees. We had to be careful going up or down the ladders because there were no safety rails. We could see Treehouse, the first cliff dwelling our, on our tour from the bottom of the ladders. Treehouse was across a canyon in an alcove below the top of the mesa. I was the only young adult on the tour. It was fun to explore behind the rocks. The alcoves where they built their houses were formed over thousands of years by water seeping through the sandstone and eroding away the face of the cliff. When the Anasazi lived in Treehouse, the only way to reach it was by ladders or ropes from the top of the mesa or by carefully climbing down steep rock walls. I got to look inside places where the Anasazi had lived. For where they stored corn and grain they had grown on top of the mesa. Scotty explained the Anasazi had added to 
their cliff dwellings with each new generation, and told us how building styles had changed with each new addition. Scotty showed us where one of the five Wetherill brothers had carved his name into the sandstone in the shape of a snake. The snake is an important symbol to the Navajo and Ute people. The snake is powerful and brings the snow and rains to water the crops in springtime. The Wetherills were early settlers and ranchers in the mountains of southwestern Colorado. Richard Wetherill spent many years exploring the Anasazi cliff dwellings, trying to make people realize how important the ruins were in American history. He was a friend of the Navajo people. In a twist of fate, he was shot and killed after an argument with a Native American customer outside the Wetherill Trading Post in Chaco Canyon, about 40 miles south of Mesa Verde. He is buried in a small graveyard at the foot of cliffs in Chaco Canyon. We walked along the dirt path to reach the ruins. The paths were like the trails used by the Anasazi before they left the Mancos Canyon in about 1250 AD. At the end of our group tour, we were far below a place called Eagle's Nest. The only way to reach Eagle's Nest was up a ladder. The ladder was more than 30 feet tall. Grandpa and I waited with the rest of the group while Scotty took one man up to Eagle's Nest. While we waited, we watched a Bailey's collared lizard pose for us on a warm rock. The collared lizard is related to the iguana. Our second night in the tribal park was exciting. It started to sprinkle when the sun set, then began to rain harder as it got darker. Lightning filled the sky and thunder boomed through the canyon. Sound travels about one mile every five seconds. There must have been lots of lightning less than a mile away from our tent. I lay awake watching as the lightning lit up our tent. Our tent was soaked and Grandpa's sleeping bag got all wet, but it was fun. The next morning, someone told us there had been a tornado up on the Mesa. The tornado didn't drop down into the Mancos River Canyon, but it was pretty close. This is a photograph of Sleeping Ute Mountain. It's called that because people can imagine it shows a man sleeping on his back. The thing I liked most about camping was being able to walk down to the Mancos River by your campsite. It was little more than a stream. After a heavy rain, it fills up quickly. I threw rocks into the water. I threw so many, my shoulder hurt. Our third tour was to Porcupine House, about 20 miles from our camp. To reach the path to Porcupine House, we climbed down another long ladder and I got to walk across a big log. Scotty showed us a sandal woven from the yucca plant. It was made by an Anasazi almost a thousand years ago. He treated it with great respect and told us it had spirits of his ancestors in it. Scotty never touched it with his fingers. How old is this sandal approximately? Uh, it probably dates all the way back either a thousand or nine hundred years. Yeah, it's pretty old. Scotty said no one knows for sure why the Anasazi moved down off the mesa and into the cliff areas. Some archaeologists think it was for protection from enemies, while others felt like it was protection from weather and to be close to water which seeped from natural springs in the walls of the caves. The biggest mystery, though, is why the Anasazi left their cliff dwellings in about 1250 AD. Some think it was because of attacks by warring tribes, and others think it was a long drought with not enough rain and snow to grow crops or to drink. We will never know the answer to most of our questions about the Anasazi. One guy told Grandpa and me, there are only two things we can say for certain about these cliff dwellings. People lived here and they left. Everything else the guide said is an educated guess. We want to know, we think we know, we will never know. Thank you for inviting me to tell you about my visit to the Ute Mountain Tribal Park. It was interesting for me to visit the park, and it has been an honor to tell you about it tonight.